Awesome. All right. Um, welcome to the buff about challenges for low spec uh, embedded Linux. This is kind of an experiment. Um, I have the feeling that, or we have the feeling that, in general, if you look at ELC in, in, in recent years, that the, um, the topics are not so much more about uh, the topics that you need for really building really low, low spec devices. And so I was trying to see maybe it makes sense to set up a forum, um, collect like topics, what are actually real challenges these days on, on the low spec side together, and then we can see if we can, uh, in the next couple of months before we hit next, uh, the next ELC, maybe make some progress on it or communicate these things that we can find here to the appropriate communities. Or maybe we go out of this room and say, no challenges, everything perfect, uh, let's go for bloat, and, uh, and, and the world is, is fine. So, um, so I, I don't know exactly what to run here and how to run it, so, so your contributions and your ideas are very much welcome. So I mean, but I thought like for the agenda for today, not try to aim too high, is first to look and um, discuss what is actually these days a low spec Linux device. It certainly has changed in the last couple of years, right? So, and um, let's maybe have, have a bit of a discussion about what, what, what we would say is a low spec device for Linux these days. But, but what I hear is that you kind of agree that it's good to have a discussion about what does low spec mean here in, in this buff initially, and so we can settle on something and say, okay, I mean, whatever, 200 megabytes or one megabyte or. I agree. So that's the first thing. Let's, let's have a bit of a discussion. What does low spec mean? Um, Robert already uh, contributed here something, but maybe others have opinions as well. The second point I think uh, would be good then once we have understood what it means uh, to be low spec, to, to look at the potential dimensions where there could be challenges, right? I mean, it could be like the Linux kernel has challenges or the bootloader has challenges or we have challenges on the libc's or we have challenges in the distributions that are just getting bloated. Um, or we have challenges on the tooling um, that make it hard to really build products um, in the low spec side where we think like bigger, if you have more, more space, it's at the moment far easier, but it doesn't need to be that case. Um, Could be, could be, right. Let's, let's talk about that in the first point. And uh, then I wanted to basically look at the various levels of the stack and the tools and dimensions. Um, what, what is there? Where are there, especially maybe we can identify some challenges that we can then take out of this session and uh, carry forward into the individual communities. And then uh, maybe if we are good, discuss what could be done. What are the topics? What are the actions that we could try to communicate out and, and bring into those various communities. I mean, does anybody want to talk about something different here in, in this session? I mean, or does everybody think that's a good approach to tackle um, this? Yeah, all right. So let's talk about what is low spec. I mean, here you see something that is pretty low spec. I'm not sure if it's the lowest spec thing, but uh, I don't know. Does anybody know what, what that is? It has networking, yes. <laughs> does, uh, does anybody any know what, what that is? It's, it's a router, yes. And uh, what do we think? What do you think is uh, the spec of that, roughly? Yeah, I think that's close. And of what? It makes of what? Flash and memory.
Okay. I think I think it's really cool. I think at the moment this guy has 16 megabytes of, of uh, storage. Does anybody know? Yeah, I think, and 64 of RAM. Is that low? Probably. Or, I mean, like 20 years ago, it's very much. It's a lot, right? <laughs> You could? You could not, yeah. Yeah. If you went back 15, 20 years ago, you could. Right, 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 right. Indeed, I mean, yeah. And then, then we have this guy. I mean, is this low spec? No. Oh, is it? It's a zero, yeah. By zero. Yeah. It has no EMMC in built in, so you can plug in whatever SD card you want. Storage gig, I think. Is it a memory? So, but it's cheap. It has nine nine euros. I think you can run a desktop. I don't know if I would use it for a desktop. So I think, but I mean, I think you can certainly use it for nice for some graphical appliances and so. I mean, it's, it's more some, something on screen display, and you do do funky stuff on it. Um, certainly, right. I mean, I mean, so this is, I think, questionable. Probably not. I don't know. I guess, I guess the other one was pretty more. This is certainly not low spec, right? It's like a, uh, it's, it's a knock. Um, but in the end, people are using it for stuff that uh, previously people used on really low spec devices, right? Well, people want. Right.
So there's a new C front. You can compile LLVM with the LLVM to C converter, and then if I fix up NPC enough, I can resurrect LLVM with that and bootstrap up to our very complexity. So I, th I think, I mean, so I personally, I like the idea and the approach to say we can define what is a low-spec device on base, what kind of stuff can you run on it. So I think, I'm not so, I mean, surely you cannot run a desktop on a low-spec device. I mean, not even XFCE. So I mean, that shouldn't qualify as a low-spec low device if you can run F XFCE on. Right, but I mean, the, the one, I think the one that I showed first that has like 16 megabyte of storage, you will not be able to that easily put an XFCE on. And now I'm thinking, but uh, graphics versus not graphics is not even matter. Maybe it's about. Talk to an extra. Hmm? If you did the extra network protocol to another machine that actually has a frame buffer, the problem you're going to have with a device like that is it doesn't have enough memory for frame buffer, mm -hmm. yeah. and it doesn't have the graphics card. Right. Exactly, but that's why I think the graphics is not the real factor here. So I have the feeling when I'm listening to that, I was trying to think. I mean, is it about di traditional distributions? What does it mean? Is it like the, the standard distributions that are binary? But then Alpine can also be pretty slow. So I was maybe thinking. You, maybe a slow spec device is something where you wouldn't want to use glibc on. You're confusing headless box with low spec box. There's an awful lot of servers out there that mm. don't have a monitor plugged into them. No, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying display and so on is a red herring. I'm saying maybe the definition is a low spec device is something where you wouldn't want to put glibc on, but you rather want to go for something like Musa or ulibc, where you can really go small embedded, and that means implicitly. It is usually built root, or you need to use Yocto or something, but even Alpine can produce very small stuff. Exactly, and it's, and it's small. Exactly, but we also use it on small things like that, because it's nice, it's binary, it's really easy to install stuff, but it's still reasonably small. You can produce something like a two, three megabyte size very easily with there, and otherwise you would have to spin up a whole Yocto engine and build everything to do these things. So, I mean, that's why I think it's not binary versus source distribution, it's rather you wouldn't want to use glibc on those low spec devices. I don't want to use glibc for anything. Not loaded the crap and <laughs> underpowered are two different mm. things. You mm. can have not loaded crap that is extremely powerful and performs very well. I mean, usually the not loaded crap is more powerful and performs very well. Yes, I'm, I'm, so, I mean, if I'm saying on low spec devices you wouldn't want to use glibc, I'm not saying you want to use glibc on, on, low, on high spec devices. I'm just saying if you, you couldn't fit your glibc in it. So I right. found that the, the, the glibc, I mean, you talked about, you talked about, like, don't micromanage. So I found that, that glibc is kind of a, it is a big hit, it's loaded. You can get away by using older versions and kind of that helps a lot. Um, and, but if you take that hit, and it's, it's a couple of megabytes. Mm -hmm.
on that first, then you're, you're, you're good, right? You can look at that and you're fine. Right? But now if the lots more things are the lots more things are in that first place. The world wants the world wants it, right? So if you're gonna say the S and I O P stands for security. But I think the definition of saying devices really designed for a certain purpose and then the resources available on that device tuned to match exactly what you need for that purpose is actually a pretty good definition of potentially, maybe it's not low spec, but there are constraint devices, purpose constraints.
And so. So I think we're going a bit off topic here. Yeah, no so I mean, I mean, so I mean, I think we have talked a bit about, and I thought it was super valuable to talk a bit about like what is low spec, and I think we have some great ideas here. And it's, it's not about finding a solution; it's really about getting an idea. And you want to say something to that, sir? All right, so I mean, let's maybe, I, I, I would like to talk for a few minutes about something else. I mean, or maybe, I don't know, you can also conjunct about this, but I think we've talked a bit about like what is low spec, so the idea was now to take a look at, at the various dimensions of, of Linux and developing Linux and so on and see if you can maybe spot certain areas where we believe there is some risk of things going off bounds or making it very difficult for people that want to build stuff for Linux um, to, to, to do their job because those guys that are developing it are not behaving, they're adding boost everywhere, and I mean, all those kind of things. Um, and, and I wanted to figure out, I mean, w maybe we can identify some hot spots in some areas of, of, um, of those things. And I had, I mean, I had basically tried to figure out, like, I mean, uh, uh, segment those, those dimensions in the way I pointed out here, which I think is one of the core Linux components. So what is the footprint of things like bootloader of and Linux and libc and, and standard libraries and so on? Maybe there are some areas where we say that's actually pretty fine. So what I know is that Linux um, has been pretty good in maintaining this zero DEF CON thing, and it has been pretty stable and keeping pretty low footprint and so on. So that sounded like th th those guys are out of the waters. <laughs> but maybe there are, there are other things that you um, experience have a bit of a problem. Or we could talk about the distributions in general. I mean, are they up to the task? Is like Yocto going through the roof uh, and, and getting bigger and bigger all the time. Uh, do you have challenges keeping that slow uh, so small? Sorry? Exactly. So I mean, that, that's the point. I mean, and, and I wanted to, I mean, we don't have much time, so I wanted to see in, in which of those you would want to take a look at and we can maybe discuss on, on those things. Are you more interested in talking about the individual components or the distributions or about the tooling, how you use, you work with those things? But I mean, let's maybe then take a look at the components and see where we feel things are going bad for the people that, um, that are really trying to do low spec devices. So as I said, I think Linux is okay. I mean, it can always be better, but I think you can compile it very, very small. I think a couple hundred yeah. kilobytes. Kind of Linux kind of. There's tiny def config as well or something, right? I mean, well, I think this, is, this was replaced by tiny def config. It's pretty small and constant, that I know, but I'm not sure about whether the, the networking is 
is too big for what was the size adding there. Probably, I mean, that's, that's why, I mean, I, th I think if you talk about it, I can also take it offline and we can measure it and then bring it next time back. And exactly. No. Might not be, that's why I mean, that's why I wanted to talk about it. I feel Linux is pretty good. I think if you come up with a kernel one or um, almost two megs, it's, uh, it's two megs is very powerful, lots of stuff you can stuff in there from the kernel side. and. You can still put that on a 16 megabyte. Exactly. I think Linux, are we, everybody is in vehement agreement that this is not really the, the, big chat, the big place where we could go and try to say that we could ensure that we that get better about it. Where is he adding that to Yocto? Is it a distribution challenge or is it... Uh, no, But it's not built into the kernel, I hope. It's not anymore. On the runtime side? During the... The point is, okay, that's people like Peter Anvin have never met embedded developers. Yes. You know, if, if, you talk to the Android, if you talk to the Android guys, they're going, oh, we have to build on 64 processor systems. We're throwing in all these things. They are doing a battery-powered device and do not comprehend the idea of resources. Right. So let's look at the other components real quick. I mean, is there anything that is bad where we should try to say that we have, we have enough weapons and tools that are good to go? So is anybody agreeing that system D is not very good for embedded or disagreeing? Everybody agrees it's that... Not a choice. You cannot make a deterministic boot order very easily, and these kind of things. It's very hard, right? You could tweak, I guess, all the dependencies in a way that you then know how it starts and when it starts, but it's like a big of a. Remember how I mentioned that modularity is one of the big advantages of Linux? So if you think glibc is too loaded, you can use musclebc instead. What's the second implementation of systemd? What does it say? Okay. Okay. I don't know, Python. But Python is not suitable for embeddedizer for low spec, right? Or we, we agree that we feel like it's. Okay, good. <laughs> I agree. I mean, so we have tools there available, I think. This V in it is also available. It's a pretty small thing. Procd and OpenWT works pretty well. Um, Spender was thing is similar, like this LXD thing where you can uh, uh, have the. That's it. 
That's basically what you said, right? Running LXD containers as, as an init process. That, that's what it's doing. Yeah. So that's basically exactly that. You bring up just very really small LXD containers to, 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 to manage your system and, uh, and do that in a, in a reasonable way. Why not? Mm, yes, we keep also the containers small, right? I mean, this, you can, in the end, I mean, the containers give you abilities to, to, to constrain them, how they are running, and you can be managing better from top. So, I mean, I think containers are not necessarily, in my opinion, not necessarily conflicting with the low spec paradigm. They have low overhead. Exactly. What is in the container needs to be, again, small, and if that is tiny and so on, then there's no problem. Exactly. It's all. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You, you can run the containerized system, and then get the abilities to do some more, a bit, bit more flexible about the software how you run, how you control it, and so on. Right. Right. So then I think middleware there, I always have the feeling like that there's always, whenever you also system D, if you bring that in, you always get D bus, right? So that's pretty. Middleware, for me, that's more of a problem than. I agree. I agree. That's, that's just, you just get, you get some packages that do innocuous dependency on the Bluetooth stack. Right. So, so Even though the Bluetooth stack, I must say, is not that big, so we wait, at some point we made a, made a, made a nice small micro container with just Blue Z in it, and that was like compressed with XZ like one and a half max, and this could take all the readings of the, the Bluetooth dongles and send it to the cloud. So, so that was fine, but I think, I mean, graphics for sure, they, I don't know, I mean, Valen, I think, I mean, the X is certainly big, right? I mean, <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't work if you want to just have something nice, a bit more comfortable than frame buffer on, on, on your device in low spec. There's, there's no good choice available. Wayland, I think is not, there's also not nothing there, but there's really, really. Mm. Because Squash FS needs buffers to extract, mm. and in it RAM FS, you're basically executing out of the page cache. Mm. Right. If you can execute the place, it's definitely better yeah. than that. But, but even so, it's like almost everything except FFS or RAM FS is going to make a second copy of the data in the page cache anyway. But I mean, I think, I think for Squash, it's not like it doesn't make a copy of everything in there, just what it needs on demand, right? I mean, it's not. But OpenWT is using it quite a lot, right? They, they, they use Squash FS to keep this. No, the, I think, so it. can be good. It's, hmm. it's one of these things you have to bench and make trade offs <coughs> of, okay, the part of the file system I'm not currently using. If I echo one to proxis the unbrought caches and stuff, I can actually make that memory go away. You know, only the files that are currently active are copied into the page cache, whereas in, in, in RAMFS, everything is always pinned into the page cache. So in some cases, it's better to do SquashFS, and in some cases, it's better to do tempfs. And it's like, which?
But it sounds like we, there we have enough choices available. I mean, right? yeah. I mean we have Scottish affairs, we have like Brahma affairs, and so on. You, you have what you need in order to do your job. So why I think on the middle way, I don't think we have everything we need to do something nice. I mean, I think no graphics stack that is more comfortable than doing frame buffers is available. Thanks. So maybe an action we could take out of it is to really look at the individual, I mean, like Bluetooth and the D buses and so on, and see what in the source distributions, how small can they actually be, and then if they have, if we figure out there's really there are really issues in source distributions, then we know that something can be done. I mean, I know in binary distributions sometimes they have to make choices and make it generic, so they bring in dependencies that in low spec and embedded you might not need, but. I think if those components at the source level, you can build them in a way that they're very constrained and they're not doing stuff with normal configure options without having to patch them and so on, then those should be pretty good, right? I mean, so we could take a look at those options um, and, and see how, how big they are and then maybe uh, summarize that afterwards, um, right? But for graphics, nobody knows anything, right? I mean, does anyone, is there anything that is pretty good for doing low spec things on graphics? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So does GTK on frame buffer have like basic windows man window management or is it all? But I mean, but what? Right. But can you run GTK frame buffer with a window manager without X and without Valent? No, I mean, no, no. I mean, how do you run it without X with a window manager? Yeah, with a window manager. Okay, let's quickly finish those. Com All right, networking, anything good? No? Are we, are we happy with whatever we have there in, in, on, on small scale, like in general just manual commands and WP supplicant if you need it, and you can pull those things in manually, or do we want, I, I is this? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. I have the feeling there's, there's something missing in the Linux system as well. I mean, I have the, we have like network manager is usually bloated, and you have conman. But if you go for the primitives, there's like nothing available that is more compatible. Exactly. Yeah. All right. 
I think we are getting kicked out. I see a big stop sign coming in. Anyway, they were nice that they let us through so many times. So, um, so, so thanks, everyone. I think we made halfway progress through that.